Hey yo YouTube, this is going to be a quick and dirty mod. I need something to do while I'm waiting for more parts for the Neo and what I'm doing over there. So, I had this brilliant idea of playing with some cartridges and this is, this is a neat little cartridge but there's issues, right? Like first of all it consumes your cartridge slot and you can't put something else in there without an expander and all the problems that come along with that. And this one was a little wonky in that they forgot to run a dress line 14 anywhere. And, you know, that's kind of necessary. So, at any rate, I, uh, I decided, hell, let's take all of this and jam it inside the computer, right? Now, you can do this already. Here, I'll slide him over with the U36 slot. And this is essentially an internal cartridge. And if you plug something into the outside, it comes up as an external cartridge. And there's different chip selects that come out of the PLA that control all this stuff. It looks for an external cart before it looks at U36. But then I thought, well, hell, I could have two option ROMs, or uh, function ROMs, I think they call them. I think that's the proper Commodore nomenclature anyway, function ROMs. Um, and we have these ROM slots left over from stuff we've abandoned, right? You know, when we consolidated all the ROMs on this board, I don't know, over a year ago. So I got to thinking, hey, let's play around with reclaiming one of these slots and using it for good or evil or whatever the hell it is you think you want to do with it. So um, we'll look at schematics in a second, but the short version is I started on this already and thought I'd stop and record something. Maybe it'll be useful. Um, there's three pins that are different on here as opposed to an external cartridge, and that's the chip select line here, pin 22, address line 14 over here, and address line 15 if you're using a 64K chip, which we want to do. So you can probably see that it's slightly mangled and there's no pins in here anymore. I desoldered the pins from these three positions in the socket and pulled them out. It's also quite handy that this little through hole right here, this little via next to R32, is address line 14. So we can just whack him over to pin 27 on the ROM and then to generate a chip select you need uh, ROM high and ROM low signals that typically go to your cart slot, right? They come out of the PLA, go through some stuff, make it to the cart slot. Well, I found those two, and it's these two little vias right here and here. So if we do a little AND gate with a couple of diodes, we now have a chip select line that behaves just like the cart slot would. So this ought to be pretty easy. A couple of diodes, socket, some wire, and we ought to be able to do something cool. All right, just a minute or two later, and I've done things to a socket. <laughs> Let me get the fuzz off it. So here is just your run-of-the-mill 28-pin socket, and across pins 1 and 28, will that focus? How do we make that focus? There we go. Across pins 1 and 28, I put a 10K pull-up resistor, so we can pull address line 15 up. If we want to select that, we can hook it up to a switch and over to ground, which we'll play with at some point. And then off of pin 22, let me get that closer. There we go. Off of pin 22, we've got the blue wire. And then off of pin 27, we have the black wire. So we ought to be able to just plunk a socket in and have this now wired the way we want it to do cool stuff. All right, so far quick and painless. Where'd my little pointy stick go? Well, we need a new pointy stick. So our socket's installed, the resistor clears everything, and if you can see the little black wire right there, he just dropped right in that, that happy little via. So this is completely reversible. We really haven't broken anything except three pins out of a socket. That was a single wipe shitty socket anyway. So uh, now we got to come up with what we're going to do with chip select. All that magic is going to happen over here. All right, where's our two little vias over here? Ah, there we go. I already cleared the solder out of them. That way I kind of knew what I was doing. So, here's my little pokey. So, these two guys, they go to pin 30 and 31 over on the PLA over here, and those are our chip select 
well, it's one of it's going to be our chip select line. It's ROM high and ROM low signals. And uh, after we get all this wired up, maybe we'll do a segment with schematics or something. But uh, all we're going to do here is drop in a couple of uh, 1N4148 diodes. Um, you can probably use damn near any diode in the world on this, but um, had these around and they're probably about right for the cause. So we're going to just put these through here and I think we'll just put them all the way in like that. So that way, and uh, yeah, the, uh, the ass end is going to face the board, the cathode, right? A little black stripey. That is going to block signal from going back to whence it should not. So we'll drop these two guys in here, solder them on, and let's see, we probably want to bend them over so they're kind of aimed that way somewhere because that's the way we want the wire to go. So I'll, uh, I'll fiddle around with these things for a second, figure out the best way to uh, bend and insulate so we don't short things we shouldn't, and we'll hook up a wire and go from there. All right, and there we go, our fancy new chip select line. <laughs> it ain't fancy, it's some shit I jammed into the board, but it's uh, it seemed to be the, the best place to go avoiding other exposed via type things, right? So they're both sticking up off the board and come together there, and, and maybe we'll zoom out a little bit here so you can kind of see what's going on. And just runs through using capacitors as a strain relief and over to pin 22 of the socket. So that should really be all this mod needs. If we plug a 32K ROM thingy in here, it should work. Now, you could do this without a diode and just pick ROM high or ROM low and bank in a single 16K chip. But why use 16K when you can use 32? So, uh, yeah, let's... Uh, Maybe we'll do a quick little run through the schematics so you can see why I did what I did, or principle of operation, or something crazy. And then we'll turn this thing on and see what happens. Alright, so I'm not good at how-tos and teaching, but I'll give this a shot here. I believe we should start at the beginning, right? And what's the beginning? When this thing boots up. So when a 128 boots... Where's my little mouse? There he is. When a 128 boots up, he will start looking... For ROMs to execute code from, and he does this in a particular order. And we have XROM and Game, and these are basically holdovers from the 64. If you've ever played with 64 carts, you know what they do. Um, external ROM and Game mode basically is 8K or 16K ROM selection. So depending on how your card is set up, it might trigger external ROM and just boot an 8K ROM, or it can do you know, game mode and do a 16K ROM. And it has Ultimax mode, which we're not going to get into here, but that basically just takes over everything. So so that's the first thing 128 is going to do is like, should I go into 64 mode? So he kind of looks here. If nothing's going on in XROM and game, he moves on. And from there, he's going to look for uh, a function ROM. Uh, 128 mode carts do not rely on XROM or game at all. These lines don't do anything. They just hang out stay high and that's that so next he's gonna ping out rom high and rom low looking for code to execute that's your external cartridge in 128 mode so these are the two lines we've anded together with those two diodes so now that these are anded together it's a chip select line for a 32k chunk of memory like rom low is 16k rom high is 16k being that we and them and we're going to select the chip at the same time, this is going to go to the chip select on our device as a single line. Um, from there, if there's nothing found there, then he'll look for function ROM. This is U36. So FROM1, be nice if there was an FROM2, but that's basically what we're creating with the two diodes. So FROM1, he will select and say, hey, is there anything there? And he looks for that CBM80 identifier. Uh, World of Yanny has a great description of all this stuff that I'll, I'll put below. Um, so if he sees nothing external, then he goes to U36. And then if nothing there, then he goes to your, you know, ROM 1, 2, 3, and 4. But we've abandoned those, right? We've abandoned 2 and 4. We really just use ROM 1 and ROM 3 now because we, we have consolidated to larger chips. 
So that's kind of the, the premise behind all of this. It's really, really easy at the end of the day. So what happens when we select a ROM? All right, we're, we're using U33 now. We're basically turning U33 into what U36 is. And there, there's not much different between these guys. Um, 35 is different with this translated address 12 and stuff, which you could work around. But uh, if you look between 33 and 36 here, what are the differences? A14 is present, which we bodged in with the little black wire. And the chip select line is different. And this is the uh, pin 22. It actually triggers off the output enable pin. The chip is permanently enabled, right? He's bonded to ground, but he is selected when output enable is put on. So yeah, I mean, that's it. We created a new output enable and we linked up address line 14, which is missing. He was just pulled high on, uh, oh, here we go. He was just pulled high on the socket. So yeah, I mean, we've basically made another U36, except we're selecting it before U36 as far as boot up is concerned. So if you have a ROM in here, you either need a software way to bail out of it, or you can hardware switch off our new output enable line that we just put in that blue wire. Um, so you could run it to a dip switch or toggle or whatever on the side. Uh, but we will just pick a ROM that we can bail out of. And if we bail out of it, it should go to 36. And then if we bail out of 36, it should go to your normal ROM setup. So this ought to open up, I don't know about a lot of possibilities, but there are cool carts out there specifically for the 128. We'll start playing with those here in a little bit. All right, forgive the messy desk and lack of capture device, but this is a quick and dirty, so this is what you get. Let's see if it still works. All right. So I've got my little cart I made up with the Start Apps thing on it. This is a neat little ROM I came across on this Facebook post the other day. Really neat stuff. We'll post links to this too. All right, we can still boot a cart. That is lovely. So now, if all holds true, I ought to be able to just pull this chip out, jam it in our new ugly socket and it ought to work we hope and think let's see if I can pull this chip out without breaking anything there's a chip lifter when you need it it's alright here we go so we will pop this chip in here, Get all the pins lined up. Yeah. All right, and let's see. Do it, boot. No. All right. What did I fuck up? We'll have to scope it and find out. All right. Well, this is embarrassing, but. Hopefully an easy fix here. I completely spaced that all the stuff was open collector. So there's nothing pulling the stuff up. It's just going to be low all the time, so it can't properly select and deselect the ROM when the computer has to do other things with memory space and all that good stuff. So uh, I figured that out when I scoped all the signals and they all look good, except the chip select line was forever low. Because there's nothing to pull it up. PLA has no ability to pull things up. It just pulls other things down. So, uh, because this is quick and dirty and whatever, I just came off the 5-volt leg going into, what's this, a 139, I think. Yeah, anyway, it doesn't matter what it is. There's 5 volts there. So I took 5 volts through a 10K as a pull-up. Um, probably could have used a 4.7 or whatever. I don't think it matters that much, but... Um, that's what I had on the bench. So yeah, 10K right there to the uh, anode side where our chip select line comes out after the diodes. And yeah, um, feeling lucky this time. So let's go plug it in and see what happens. All right, moment of truth 2.0. Hey, <laughs> all right, little buddy. You live to fight another day. I won't take the sledgehammer to you. So, uh, 
Yeah, it works. Uh, so I think the next thing I'll do is uh, cook up a ROM. The, the Start Apps thing, right? The, the guy who wrote this is awesome. I forget his name, but he just posted the other day that he updated this. So I'm like, oh, I'll go check those out. And there's, you know, this is volume five. There's a whole bunch of different versions of them with different software on them. So um, you can escape to basic, obviously. Press enter and it'll take you to 64 mode. So it's it's a great little startup thing for the 128. I can't believe I never heard of this before. This thing's awesome. So, uh, but I would imagine, and I think he said something on his site, that you can run two of these, you know, one internal, one external. Um, could run three of them now, right? Maybe, sort of? Nah. You know, this is still the same as the card slot. But um, you can definitely run two of these things. So I can burn up another one put it in U36, and, you know, can have one there, one there, and have all kinds of shit going on in here. So, yeah, anyway, that's, uh, that's that. We have reclaimed an abandoned socket to do something useful with it. So if, uh, if we decide we want to do something else, if we come up with another chip select line we derive from some unused addresses, we could probably light up the socket as well. There's not too much unused address space in the 128, though, you know, the, they did a, a great job sucking all that stuff up. And I, I think Bill Hurd just went crazy in the warehouse grabbing parts. I'm like, we're going to wire these things together and call it a computer. So uh, anyway, that's that. It boots. It works. And uh, yeah, if you get a soldering iron for Christmas, you should go solder something. So uh, Merry Christmas to all. I'm going to pack up and leave town for a little while. And hopefully parts will show up and we'll do some Neo stuff in the new year. So thanks all for subscribing. I can't believe I have a thousand subscribers. <laughs> There's a thousand other nut jobs out there. I appreciate you guys. I really do. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year or whatever it is you celebrate. Take care.